Hey guys, my name is John Holton, and today I'm going to be talking about setting up a Tomcat and Keycloak standalone authentication server. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, outline a few things. Uh, I'm going to make a few assumptions. One, that you're using Tomcat 8, and two, you have Tomcat installed to your path as Catalina Home, and then three, you have Catalina Home slash bin added to your path for the scripts. So I'm not going to go into detail on how to install Tomcat or how to install to uh, Keycloak. But there are a few guides and I will have links in the description for where you can go to get these details. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our Tomcat main page here. And this shows you that you have Tomcat running, everything's good, and whatnot. But the one difference is, is that my Tomcat is running on port 8081. Your Tomcat will be running by default on port 8080. The reason I had to make the change for Tomcat to run on port 8081 is that Keycloak also runs on port 8080. And it's just easier to change the Tomcat port than it is the Keycloak port. I'll get into detail about how to change that port in just a second, but the first thing I want to talk about is accessing the manager app. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go to our Tomcat um, home. And as we see here, we're in our Tomcat home and we want to go into the conf folder. Then we want to go into our Tomcat users.xml. I'm going to open mine up with Atom text editor. You can use any text editor you like. So here we have the Tomcat users.xml. At the bottom, you can see some Tomcat roles uh, commented out, but the roles that we care about adding are role name of manager GUI, a role name of admin GUI, and then we want to create a user right here. If we, I named my uh, Tomcat with a super secret password of secret and I assign the roles of manager GUI and admin GUI. Obviously, if you're installing this in a production world, you want to use uh, a different password than secret, something a bit more secure. So let's go ahead and save this. So while we're also in our conf directory, let's go ahead and change the port real quick. So let's go ahead and edit the server.xml. Going ahead and opening it up with Atom as well bringing this back to focus. And here we want to scroll down until we see connector port. Yours will look something like this. So what we want to do here is change this to 8081 and save it. This will tell Tomcat to uh, reload to port 8081. Uh, so first, before we restart the browser, what we want to do is we want to restart Tomcat. So to do that, we want to run the scripts shutdown .sh and startup.sh. This will effectively restart Tomcat. So I'm not going to actually reload it, but you should do that and then go into your browser and click up here and then retype this from 8080 to 8081. And then that will reload Tomcat. It will take just a minute, give it some time, but then once it's back, you'll see you're on port 8081. After that, we'll be able to log in to our manager app. Now, because I'm already logged in, I will bypass the login dialog box that will pop up about right here. Just go ahead and enter the username and password we just created. So here we are in the Tomcat Web Application Manager. The app we're going to want to focus on is down here on the bottom, the test app. So we're in the test directory with a name of test and I'm running and I have a few sessions open. But the great thing about this is that I can start, stop, reload, and undeploy and expire my sessions all without affecting my other Tomcat apps that are running. So to get some actual visual detail, let's open up our Finder. And we'll go into the Tomcat web apps directory and into our test uh, folder. So here what we have is we have some images and all we have is a little Tomcat GIF, our index.html, our meta int folder, our roles folder, and our web int folder. The folders that actually matter to you are the meta int and the web int. The roles folder just contains stuff for the authentication that we'll demo later. The images just so some, the, our index page looks nice and our index page. So our index page, if we open it up and add them, we see just some, some HTML that we have a title and some colors and some text and some links. And the link that actually we care about is right here to the roles folder. What this says, what this is doing is that we require at least role zero auth to enter. 
I'll get into detail about that in just a second. So we go back to our finder, we see we have a meta in folder and inside we have a context.xml. The context.xml contains a valve that allows Tomcat to redirect to a Keycloak auth server and handle everything uh, regarding authentication and logging in. Basically, this intercepts all calls for authentication. So then going back into the roles folder, we just have a little index page that contains a few links to our following JSP pages right here, just outlining that we need role zero to enter role zero.jsp, role one to enter role one, role two to enter role two, and whatnot. The whole point of having this roles folder is just that we have a default point of entry uh, that we need to authenticate against in order to access. So we need to authenticate with at least role zero to access the roles folder. So then we have the web end folder. Inside the web end folder, we have a keycloak specific file, keycloak.json, and inside that file contains some JSON that just lets keycloak know how to authorize uh, and what server it's going to. Then we have the web.xml file. Inside this file contains all the structures we need to properly set up and configure our web application. So going over it briefly, we have a display name of test, our description is a test app, our module name, and then what the real point of this is we have our security constraints. We have about, let's see, one, two, three, four constraints in here. Our first one is to constrain access to the roles folder. You need to have at least role zero on your user to access the roles folder. Then we are constraining that the page role zero.jsp needs role zero. The page role one.jsp needs role one. And same thing, role two.jsp needs role two authorization. The main thing I want to point out here is that you must set your authorization method to Keycloak. Without saying this, Tomcat doesn't know to redirect to the Keycloak system. So now that we've gotten a general overlay of the structures of the Tomcat app, let's actually go into the Keycloak system. So now that we have our Tomcat web application configured, let's actually configure our Keycloak systems. First, we're going to need to go to the Keycloak downloads page and into the adapters folder. Then we want to scroll down until we find the Tomcat 8 adapter dist 140 final.zip, and we want to download that. Here we see that it's downloaded into my downloads directory and I've just unzipped it. And that inside this folder contains a bunch of jars. We want to take all these jars and put them in our Tomcat home directory inside of our lib directory. So what we'll do is we would select all these jars and drag and drop them into the lib folder of our Tomcat home directory. Since I've already done this, I'm not going to actually drop them in here, but there's where you would drop them. Then. While we're still in this Keycloak downloads area, going back to the main downloads page, we're going to want to download the Keycloak 140 final. This is the standalone server, as we know in the description. When you download this and extract it, just place it somewhere. I've got most of my code in the user local directory, but you can put yours wherever you want. Basically, you'll need to just add the Keycloak bin to your path so you can access the scripts. So, Speaking of scripts, we want to actually launch the Keycloak server. So do, to do that, we do sudo standalone.sh and type in my password. And then we fire up the Keycloak standalone server. So this is just a bunch of spew saying that the Keycloak server is starting up and whatnot. So I'm just going to go and drag this off screen since we don't need it anymore. I'm going to go ahead and close these two tabs. And so now we can go to localhost 8080 slash auth and we get ourselves to the Keycloak domain page. Next, we want to click on Administration Console. This brings us to the Keycloak login page. We want to log into the master realm. By default, the login is admin with a password of admin. At first, you will have to log in with these credentials. Then you will be asked to change your password for admin. Go ahead and change it to something else besides admin or just leave it as admin. You're running on localhost, it's all good. So we log in and we see we're brought to the realm selection page. Here we have our master realm that's created by default in our and that's about it. The rest of these realms are realms I've created for other purposes. 
So to create a realm, you would hover over Select Realm and click Add Realm. Since I've already created a realm for this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and go into Test Realm. But basically, you would give it a name and you would click Create. So I'll just show you for the sake of the demo. Click on Add Realm, give it a name, and click Create. Let's just navigate back to Test Realm. Once you create your realm, you'll automatically get switched to it. So if we had created Test Realm, we'll have, you know, this is the screen you'll see. So the next thing you want to do is you want, we want to create a client. That's what Keyclip calls applications. So I'll just refer to them as clients slash applications for the rest of this demo. Let's go to the clients page. These are the clients that Keyclip creates by default. Everything here is default except the test app. This is an app I created earlier for the sake of setting up this demo, and we'll refer to it later on. But let's go through actually creating a client. Let's give it the client ID of test client, a name of test client. And then here what we want to do is we want to make sure it's enabled. We want to make sure we're using the, the client protocol of OpenID Connect and not SAML. If you're using SAML, uh, there's documentation online for how to use that, but we will not be covering that in this tutorial. Same thing for the access type. We want to use public. If you're using confidential or bare only, there is also documentation online, but will not be covered in this tutorial. This is the important part. You want to make sure that this redirects back to your Tomcat app. So you want to do HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8081 slash test slash roles slash star. Then we click save. So I'm going to go back to my test app but it'll be the same UI that you have here. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to go to installation. We want to select our format of keycloak.json. Remember that keycloak.json file we created earlier that lives in our web apps test uh, web in keycloak.json? Let's go ahead and open that real quick and bring it over. And what we want to do is we want to copy this code right here and paste it into our keycloak.json file. So, so Keycloak knows where it's going to and what it's doing when Tomcat says, hey, Keycloak, handle this. So that's it for the client setup. Let's create a few roles. So here you see I've created a few roles already. Role 0, 1, and 2, and role X. Apparently role X is awesome. Let's just get rid of that one. So let's add a role. So let's call it role test uh, with a description of tester and save. So then you're in the role test and then to get back to the roles you want to see you have to click on the roles thing. Keycloak doesn't automatically go back to there. So here we have our roles, role 0, 1, 2, and role test. So next thing we should do is create a user to use these roles. If you're using something like LDAP you can use user federation to connect to it we will not be covering that in this tutorial. So let's create a user. So if you've already been in here and you've created some users, you need to click on view all users to view the users uh, that you've previously created. But let's go ahead and create a new user. So here we are in the add user menu. Let's create a user of user test with an email. You know, we don't need this stuff for the sake of this demo, but if you're using this in a real world environment, you would want to fill this in with the appropriate details. Want to make sure the user is enabled uh, and if you were using this like I said in a production world you would probably want the user to verify their email. Then we want to click on save. Next we want to click on credentials and give this user a password. So I'm just going to give them one two three because it's easy to type in. And so what temporary means is when the user logs in for the first time they'd have to change their password. But for the sake of this demo we don't need to do that so I'm just going to turn off temporary. Next we want to reset the password so that this new password takes effect. Go ahead and change the password and then click on role mappings. Role mappings allows us to assign certain roles to this user. So for the sake of this demo, let's assign the user role zero and role one. And there we go. We've assigned the user, user test, role zero and role one. If we go back to users, we click on view all users, we see the, the user I created earlier and the user we just created. So let's go in and look at the user I created earlier just so we can see what's going on as well. Same thing, credentials, I already set those up in role mappings, we already have the same, we have role zero and role one. So let's do a little bit of an overview of what we just covered in this Keycloak admin console. We created a realm 
called test realm using the add realm feature. Then we went in and we created a new client called test client using create. I'm going to look, reference my test app and we gave it a client ID, a name, same thing, a valid redirect URI. We went into the installation tab and we copied the keycloak.json code from here into our Tomcat web apps web inf keycloak.json file as we see right here. Then we created a few roles, role zero, one, and two. And then we created a user, clicking on view all users to view our users. Created a user tester or user test with the roles of role one and role zero. Navigating back to the Tomcat web application manager, let's put this authentication system into action. So let's open up the test app in our incognito window if you're using Chrome or private browsing if you're using uh, another browser. The reason we do that is we don't want any cookies that have, may have been created earlier to overflow into this test and screw the test up. So we're in our index.html. What we want to do now is we want to click on our roles index page, which will trigger our key cloak login. Let's go ahead and click on that. So let's log in with the tester we created. Click and the same password and we hit log in. If all goes well, we'll be redirected into the roles folder to the hit the roles index.html. Cool, everything's working. We've authenticated, our user has role zero, so we're able to access the roles folder and view the index.html. We can also prove that, that we have role zero by going into the role zero.jsp, which we can do. And since we also have role one authorization, we can go into role one JSP, but since we do not have role two authorization, we cannot access role two. If we try to access the role two.jsp, we'll be given a 403 access denied. So that basically sums up setting up a Tomcat uh, server with a standalone key cloak authentication server. There will be links in the description with uh, further information on where you can go to get details on the context.xml, webxml, and further um, information. Thank you. I hope you are able to now set up a Tomcat server with a standalone key cloak authentication server. Bye.